Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to Dynamics 365 Video Tips, your source for Power Platform and Dynamics 365 tips and instruction. So in our last video, we looked at AI Builder and we discussed kind of what it is and how it works. And we showed you kind of a quick little overview on how you might go ahead and build something like an object detection or a form processing model, and then showed you how to kind of consume that inside a Canvas app. In today's feature, I want to go ahead and look a little bit deeper into AI Builder and look more at like the prediction capabilities and the language recognition capabilities, particularly from the binary classification and text classification scenarios. And then also how you can go ahead and take Take that information and then do something tangible with it whether it's inserted in a flow and use that information to go ahead and do something you know like send an email or create records in in dynamics or in cds or maybe use that information in some other capacity so if we hop back into our environment that has AI Builder enabled into it, I can see that when I go into the build, I've got two options here. I've got my binary classification and I've got my text classification. Let's go ahead and look at the binary classification first. So this would be more of kind of your, your predictive scenarios where you want to just basically go ahead and populate you know like a true false yes no value something in kind of a two option set based upon what's happening within there so it'll take individual items it'll evaluate those and it'll build something to predict what's going to happen from there so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use some of the sample data that they've already included or that i got off of the github thing that we mentioned in the previous video i'm going to just go ahead and call this shopping prediction And then I'll go ahead and hit create. <clears throat> So the first thing it's going to ask me is, is what do I want to predict? So again, just like anything with AI Builder, this is going to need to be based off a of CDS. So everything is coming off of a CDS database or a CDS entity. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the entity I want to work with. And as part of that sample data, I actually have an online shopper intention to our entity that we can work with. And then in here, I'm going to pick what specific field I want to work with. So in this case, what is the item? And it's basically going to default to uh, two option sets. So I have revenue and I have weekend. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose my revenue option. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my fields. So now this is what fields are going to influence whatever it is that you want to predict. And so this is going to look at every field in the entity and determine how that information could potentially work with or or impact what it is that you're going with. So I've got administrative, I've got bounce rates, I've got browser uh, that they're working with, I've got exit rates, I've got import sequence number. These are all things that are going to basically look at, you know, page visits and, and things that are coming into a specific online shopper page that is stored within that entity. What type of traffic? All of this could have some type of impact depending upon what that particular scenario is. Now, I don't necessarily have to determine what, I mean, I don't necessarily have to use them all, but I do have to define what specific options options that I want to work with. If there's any fields that I don't want to have, I can choose to exclude those fields as we're going through. Then I can finally go ahead and train my model. And as I go in and train my model, this is going to determine kind of what those individual situations are. So it's going to look at the data fields. It's going to look at the number of fields that it's going through. It's going to intrude, uh, basically give you kind of an overall scenario that allows you to look at everything that's kind of happening from those individual situations. Now I've got one that we've kind of went through that uses this same type of situation. This is this purchase intention. I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. And I can see here that as it's gone through and it's looked at that information, it's gone through and it saw that 65% of this information is going, it's, it's 65% accurate from kind of a determination standpoint. And it looks at the top influencers. So the page values, the month in which they're visiting, exit rates, all of that information, it comes in and determines and weights how that's going to have an overall impact on what's happening. At some point in time, I can come back and I can run this information. I can use that predictions in model driven apps or inside power apps if I want to, or I can start going in and retrain that model as more information or more values or more tables or more items come in. I could certainly come back and retrain that model if I wanted to. Once this model has been trained, now I can go ahead and publish it 
Once it's been published, now it can be consumed. Now at any point, if you ever need to make a modification to an existing model or a model that's already been published, you can come back into here, go to new version, and you can basically walk through the step-by-step -step wizard again. So what specific fields do you want to do? What items do you want to work through? I can modify the fields that I'm working with. I can modify what fields are being used in the prediction scenario. I can retrain the model. And then if I need to republish that, I can at any point in time. So this is nice because it also gives you the ability to revert back to whatever it is that you want to do. Now, if I go ahead and just back out of here real quick, and go back into kind of my power apps. Let's say I wanted to create or work with a model-driven app that used this information. Well, here I have one that I've created, a model-driven prediction app. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at the views that are associated with the online shopper intention. And I can see here that I actually created a view here called AI probability. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. So what happens is when you go out and use kind of the binary prediction option, it's going to go through and it's going to add fields to your CDS for the entity that you're working with. So in this case, it actually adds the AI builder revenue field, uh, which is the prediction and the probability. So these are the two fields that it populated based upon that information. Once that information is populated, now I can come in and I can add that to any Dynamics 365 view associated with that particular entity, or I should say any model driven app view associated with that particular entity, which now gives me the ability to go ahead and consume that. So that's how the binary prediction would work if you wanted to go ahead and create that model. So why don't we go ahead and see what the text classification would look like. So in this particular scenario, now I want to go out and I want to analyze kind of overall experiences and see what people have thought about healthcare visits that they've recently had to a healthcare facility and then be able to use that information to do something tangible with it in the past, in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit text classification under AI Builder. I'm just going to call this, you know, healthcare prediction or, you know, prediction model around healthcare. I'm going to just call this healthcare and I'll go ahead and hit create. And you'll see in here that there's two different scenarios that it needs. In this case, it needs to know what is the text that it wants to analyze and are there any specific tags or what are the tags that we're going to use to actually tag this information. And all of this would be sitting somewhere in an entity inside CDS. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. Now, as purpose of the sample build data that they include out on GitHub, there actually is an entity that you can import in for healthcare that has a lot of this stuff in it. That way, if you wanted to just kind of play with some of the items, you could go through and, and see how things work. But I'll go ahead and hit select text. I'm going to find the entity that I want to work with, which in this case is going to be healthcare. I'll go ahead and then pick what is the the text or the, the item that we want to go ahead and do the anal analysis on. So in this case, there just happens to be a field in this entity called text that has text related to the visits that they had. So we're going to go ahead and hit text and select field. And then it'll give you just a quick little preview and say, okay, here's what the data looks like that's associated with this field inside the database. So lots of information around liking the, the staff and what they did. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Now we need to determine what specific tags we want to use. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit set uh, select tags. I know that the tags in this case are in the tags field that we have in this particular entity. So I'll go ahead and hit that field. Then what it does is it says, okay, how do you want to separate these tags? Do you want to separate these tags, you know, with no separator? Do you want to use semicolons? And this is what those tags would look like. In this case, as I'm going through and looking all this, I can see that comma really gives us the best way to facilitate that. It's breaking everything off into its own situation. So I'm going to go ahead and choose comma and that'll define my tags much more, much more simplicit. So I'm going to go ahead then and hit next. Then it's going to review kind of what those tags look like. So based upon the text that you have, here's the tags that we were able to capture and pull out of that individual information that you could potentially use as you're going forward. Then I'll go ahead and hit next. 
and then I can pick what specific language I want to use. Again, since we are in preview, there's a limited amount of languages available. Currently, you can see that we have English, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish. For our purposes today, we'll go ahead and just choose English, and then Next. And then finally, I can go ahead and train this model. So it'll then go out and train all of that information, just like any scenario as it, as it goes through. It'll tell you when the status of that particular option is done. And then after it's gone through and trained that, you'll now have all of that information available. Now, I already have one in here um, that we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this feedback for analysis routing. I can see here that it's the published model basically looks at the fact that it's kind of 51%. And so it shows me that we have the information in from there. It's showing us what the input item is as far as the item that we're going through. And if I wanted to, I could actually go through and do a quick test on this where I could type in specific tags that I wanted. I could test it and it'll show you what specific tags it picks up based upon the item that was in there and the confidence in which it suggests that. So now I could go ahead and do something with this as part of the application. Now the easiest way to do this would be to maybe look at something from a flow perspective. So in here I actually have a flow that's already been created that consumes this particular model. So if I come into this particular flow, give it just a second to load up here, and I'll go ahead and edit this flow. So I can see coming in from here that I'm pulling information in from the CDS and I'm actually using the predict model, which is now part of this AI builder that, that for the power app. So it looks at any models that I have that are currently uh, set up for text prediction. It actually shows me what information we're looking with. And then since this information is being used from a JSON perspective, it looks at the content or the response that's in that particular payload. And then I can use triggers to determine how I want to parse that information out. So the parse JSON command is just parsing out all of the individual kind of name value pairs associated with this so I can pull that information in. So this is pulling out the type of object, what it is, and then that way I can use that information as I want to move forward. Then if you're using flow or if you're familiar with flow for each item that is output as part of the response, we have a condition that looks at this that says, okay, if the type is equal to staff and the score of the item is over, you know, 0 0.63, now we're going to send an email. But what this allows us to do is to take those results from that predictive scoring model and actually do something with it tangible inside the application, whether that's, you know, surfacing in inside a common data model or a, a model driven app or working with it from a flow standpoint. So that's going to do it for our look into AI Builder and how it works. As you can see, it's it's very exciting. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. Just keep in mind it's still in preview. So as we're working through this, obviously they will create new features and, and modify different situations. But it's a great way to see what's coming and, and how you can start to bring some of this artificial intelligence into things like model driven apps and canvas apps and go through. If there's any significant changes or as items come up, we'll definitely revisit it and look at some of the things that you can work with from there. But as always, I wanted to just say for everybody here at CRM Tip of the Day, uh, this has been Derek saying thanks a lot for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.